What's up, everybody? Happy Monday to you. This is our Three Point Stance presented by Mountain Dew. Megan Triplets out today. I am John Roser. Filling in for Megan is my man, Devin Walker. What up, Devin? What's good, Rose? Happy Monday to you. Happy 21. Happy 2021 to you. And you're pulling double duty having to fill in on uh, having to fill in on Rise and Grind. Y'all talked a lot about this this morning. Um, and we will start out with uh, one of the big things to talk about, and that's uh, – I guess it, it shouldn't really be a surprise how big like that, that it was an upset, but Ohio State absolutely smashing Clemson in the college football playoff. Uh, Alabama taking care of business against Notre Dame. They kind of took the foot off the gas. And Notre Dame possessed the ball. And so Alabama scored the fewest amount of points they scored. I think I heard in the last three seasons scoring uh, just 31 points. But that sets up Alabama and Ohio State. We get it next Monday night. Uh, down in Miami at Hard Rock Stadium. That throw Justin Fields made. Which uh, one? Which one, Roser? You said one, that. The, the, you, I think we know the one. The 63-yard bomb to Chris Olave yeah. that, was, that was straight through the air. Um, it wasn't Olave catching it and running with it. That was from his own 37-yard line. Russian bombed it to the goal line in perfect stride. Um, I think this is kind of the Ohio State team we had been waiting to see all season long. Going into the season, it was thought the two most talented teams are Alabama and Ohio State, and we had not seen it from Ohio State. The performance from Ohio State you saw the other night against Clemson, does that lead you to believe, can they beat Alabama? I think if you can get the Justin Fields you got in that game, I think it's possible because we know Alabama's going to put up points. They're going to rack up yards. They're going to rack up. They're going to go up and down the field. It's going to be a shootout. But I think Justin Fields, he went like I think Dennis Dodd said the best, best this morning. He went from having his worst game of his career against Northwestern to having the best game of his life, of his, of his entire life on the biggest stage. So Justin Fields, man, and for what he, what he did in that game, knowing that Clemson – and their dabble swing, he thought that they thought very low of them, the number 11 ranking. I think that was in the back of their minds when they played that football game. So they had a little chip on their shoulder. So shout out Justin Fields uh, for his performance. But I'll say this, bro. There's nothing stopping that juggernaut in Alabama. I, I, there, I, there's, a, there's a difference. There's levels, bro. Did you know, Meek Mill said it. There's levels to the ish, right? Alabama is a, the next level of any other football team in, in America right now. They don't have the dominant defenses of the past of past Alabama teams, but they have a legitimate cheat code in Devontae Smith. And um, so I, I just think that it's going to be a shootout. It's going to be a fun game. It's not going to be your typical 17-14 game in the national title. I think it's going to take at least 50 points, possibly, to win the Natty this year. The, I, no, I'm with you. I have, already, uh, I have already hammered the over in this game. Of course you uh, have. It, it is at 76. Well, the two, the two, the two great offenses – the two really good offenses we have seen Alabama play this year have been Florida and have been Ole Miss. And they put up points and they made it and they made it tough. You know, Florida, we never felt like Florida was going to beat Alabama, just kind of like we never thought Ole Miss was either. But they scored enough to make the games interesting. And this Ohio State team has the ability to do that. You know, you're right about the Dabo thing. It, and we said it on, on the Chris Vernon show last week. He might be chirping a little too much. Yeah. And Urban Meyer said, uh, he talked to somebody at Ohio State. I'm guessing it was Ryan Day, their head coach. Uh, <laughs> said after Dabo came out and ranked them 11, Ryan Day said Ohio State had their three best practices they have had all season long right after that. That team was focused. They had the score from last year's Fiesta Bowl against Clemson, 29-23. They had that score posted in their locker room all offseason. They were ready for this game. We also saw how much Chris Olave really means to that offense um, at, at the wide receiver position because he did not play in that Northwestern game, and he really is the deep threat. He's the guy who can get behind the defense. And then you mentioned with Alabama, I don't know what you do uh, when we're going to your sec to the NFL. I don't know what you do with Devontae Smith because Notre Dame did what they could to shut off the deep pass to him. But then now like, all right, we'll just throw screen passes and he's going to run 30 yards for a touchdown every time. And no one touches him. No one touches no, him. On you the don't field. get near him. <laughs> you you yeah, don't. I saw the, the comp to him in the NFL is uh, is Marvin Harrison, and that might be a really good one just with his speed and how good of a route runner he is. I heard you chirping this morning on Rise and Grind about the Baltimore Ravens and the Tennessee Titans, which I think is the premier matchup in the NFL playoffs this weekend. Um, I think Buffalo is going to handle Indianapolis. 
Um, that line has gone from six and a half to seven and a half already. So that the, the money has come in on Buffalo on that one. But the Titans are three and a half point favorites over the Baltimore Ravens. The Titans have had the Ravens number the last two times they've played. Knocked them off in the playoffs last year. Beat them 30 to 24 in overtime earlier this season. Uh, but the Titans are three and a half point favorites. And the total is set at 54. But I'm with you. I think this is the big matchup of the weekend in the NFL. It's the, the biggest matchup of the weekend, Roser. Lamar Jackson redemption game. All the haters, including you, are going to have to eat crow. This. I cannot wait for Lamar Jackson to finally put on a playoff performance for the ages and make everybody eat crow. Hey, no pun intended. you want to hear something? I like the Ravens, too. The Let's way, go! The way they have been – if they run the ball the way they've been running the ball – it's a different team because they can run the they run the ball with Lamar. They run it with J.K. Dobbins. They run it with Mark Ingram. They run it with Gus Edwards. They got four different guys. They can just throw at you, throw at you, throw at you. Now we know the Titans can throw Derrick Henry at you too. And we saw um, he became you know one of the most recent backs to rush for over two thousand yards in a season. There's no denying how good uh, he is. But no, I'm with you. I like the Ravens to upset the Tennessee Titans this weekend uh, in the NFL playoffs. Elsewhere, the Saints and the Bears. Yeah, whatever. I guess Drew Brees is saying he's going to retire. You know, the news came out. He's going to retire at the end of the season and take his job as a broadcaster with NBC is the biggest news there. And I'll agree with Jessica Benson. I heard her say this morning, dude, I have no idea what Josh Allen looks like. I don't. I, I have no clue what Josh. And he might he might have been the best quarterback in the NFL this season. And I have no idea what he looks like. You can put him some cargo right now. No clue. Put some cargo shorts on and a hoodie. He would. He can just blend in. Yeah, no clue. I mean, I, this is what happens when you play college football in Wyoming. Last but not least, we, we saw uh, the return that we've been waiting for for well over a year. It wasn't uh, what we wanted it to be uh, for two reasons. One, the Grizzlies couldn't get a win and spoil Marc Gasol's return. But the other reason is, obviously, there were a limited amount of fans. where They said 74 fans in the crowd. Uh, but what was your thoughts on Marc Gasol's return to FedEx Forum? It, it was dope. It was one of those things where, like, you you wish there was fans in the building to kind of all kind of soak it in and be there for Mark because Mark has been he's been there for so many people in this community. So you would love you would love to see that. But I think as far as like a tribute, shout out to Mike Blevins and his team for putting together a dope tribute video for Mark. Uh, Mark even shed a tear in, in the moment. Just seeing Mark walk around, he couldn't really walk around the arena like he wanted to. But everybody that the faces he recognized, he was talking to everybody. He was dapping up everybody. Uh, protocols, of course. Uh, yeah. But he was dap like, making sure like he showed love to everybody because he knows how much the city loves him. Like he even like he dapped me up. I was on, I was here on the back end of his uh, his kind of tenure here. He even showed he showed me some love. So like for me as a Grizzlies kind of like person, I, I show love to Mark because I remember I would never forget the day when I was working at Kroger as a produce man at the age of 17, 18, uh, working in college, just trying to get some money. And I saw Marcus Saul come in and buy produce. And I kind of lit up. I was like, oh, my God, this Marcus Saul, this Marcus Saul. Can you take a photo with me? Took a photo with me. Had him, like, chatted with me a little bit about basketball. So, uh, like, to me, I, I got much love for Mark in my heart always. So, like I said, my life is taking me full circle with Mark. So, I got to salute him for sure. And just wait till, and wait till you hear this. I've blown your mind with my Lamar Jackson Ravens opinion already today that I think they're going to beat the Titans. I think LeBron James is dead right. And they need to re-air that video when fans are allowed back in the arena. They need to re-air that video because Mark deserves his flowers from the Grizzlies fans. He absolutely deserves to get that. Um, it was, it was, it is weird as can be to see him in a Lakers jersey, just like it was weird to see Mike Conley in a Jazz jersey. It was weird when Zebo came back wearing a Kings jersey. Um, it was weird seeing Tony come back wearing a Pelicans jersey. But uh those other three all got their moment and they're standing ovations from the crowd after their videos. And Mark Gasol uh, deserves that too. So I think it would be a good thing to play that when he does return. Devin, I will see you in just a little bit. We got our show coming up at noon where we will talk about all these things and more. This has been our three-point stance presented by Mountain Dew.